Mr. Transformers 96 here with another end of the year ranking video. This time it's going to be from the Hot Toys of 2021. So I'm going to take uh, the entirety of the Hot Toys that I purchased this year and rank them from my least favorite to my absolute favorite Hot Toy. Um, so I do this every year of course. Uh, Hot Toys is just kind of those running lines that I do collect every year. Um, this year quite a huge spike f compared to last year as far as how many figures are on this list. Last year, and I think because of the pandemic, there were a very few figures that I picked up. I think that they released just a lot less in general. Um, but I think there was only like maybe six, seven Hot Toys on last year's list. Uh, this year, it's more than double that. There's going to be 17 figures on the list. And uh, I actually picked up 19 figures this year. Um, the reason that I'm excluding two is just... Uh, for the fact that they're in a difficult spot to get to, and they're both older figures anyway. Red Snapper from Iron Man 3, and the New Goblin from Spider-Man 3. So that's why they're not going to be included within this ranking. Uh, but otherwise, I've got 17 figures I purchased this year that will all be included on the ranking. And uh, yeah, of course, this list is just my personal preference. Not necessarily saying that this is the order as far as the, the best figure, but it's what I personally think think is the best, as well as uh, I take into account, you know, how much I enjoyed the figures as well. Um, so let's get started here, uh, ranking the Hot Toys of 2021 from my least favorite to my favorite. And in last place, we have the Shore Trooper from The Mandalorian. So this is a, a figure that is very good. There's nothing wrong with this figure. The reason I put it in last place is because it's so basic. Obviously, just a helmeted head sculpt, no actual head sculpt underneath, um, and the bare, bare minimum of accessories. One weapon, you're very much your standard hands, and then a very standard base. So now nothing, uh, you know, this isn't something that I'm saying Hot Toys did wrong, uh, because that's really all this figure can have. You know, could they have included a couple extra hands or something? Yes, of course, but for the most part, I don't think Hot Toys did anything wrong with this figure. It's just the figure himself lends himself to a very basic uh, figure, so the character himself lends himself to a basic figure. So because of that, I, I felt it very hard to put him, uh, you know, above anybody else on this list that comes with a lot more and is more dynamic. However, good figure overall, but just basic uh, by nature of the character. And next up we have the Mandalorian. This isn't the best car armor, but it's the version 1. Um, so this figure, again, not a bad figure. It has some really great things about it. Um, my issue with it is, you know, just like the sh uh, Shore Trooper, it only has a helmeted head sculpt, so it's much easier to do, and you lose what I think is the best part of a Hot Toy figure, which is that wonderful face sculpt. Um, with the Shore Trooper, it's understandable. With this one, however, it is not. It, we really should have got a head sculpt of the character underneath. Um, the first Mandalorian figure that did not have the best car armor, that one, helmet only, is completely fine. You never see him in that armor without his helmet on, and uh, it was also put on pre-order before we even saw him take off his helmet, if I'm not mistaken. This one, however, though, went on pre-order well after the, the first season had ended. We had seen his head sculpt. Um, we deserved a head sculpt, but they didn't do it, and I personally believe they didn't do it specifically so that they could do what they did later on, which is re release a second version of it um, to get people to buy this one and that one, because uh, that second version didn't go on pre-order until after this one had come out. So I find that just a little slimy and, uh, and not great with the expense of these figures. I think that they shouldn't, you shouldn't have to buy multiple of them to get uh, everything that you want with a, uh, a representation of that character. So um, I um, definitely am disappointed by that. Again, by no means a, a bad figure or a horrible figure, but I'm um, definitely taking major marks down because it does feel like an incomplete figure. And taking that 15th spot, we have Nebula from Endgame. Uh, this figure overall is quite good. I like the sculpting of the costume itself, a lot of layers. Um, unfortunately, the you know just nature of the fabric of the costume prevents articulation pretty substantially, especially in the legs. Um, however, with the mechanical arm, you do get full range there. So although that left arm kind of takes the brunt of all the poses, you can still get some decent stuff out of her, which is good. Uh, the main reason that... Um, 
uh, I have her low on this list is the proportions. I find her tor torso very elongated and the belt too high, which gives her a very strange look when it when it comes to just the torso area, uh, which is a shame. I think that that's something that can be you know easily fixed. So it's disappointing that they didn't just redesign the body um, when they noticed these issues because I mean it, they're pretty obvious. Um, and then the belt again is like really high, so very strange looking in some retrospects. Overall though, a decent figure and very happy to finally get a figure from Nebula after her, like, third time in a uh, MCU film. And taking that 14 spot, we have IG-11 from The Mandalorian. Uh, this is, again, a good figure. Um, I think that the having the sideshow version of IG-88 and then getting this Hot Toys version of IG-11, you can see the major differences and the major, you know, leaps and bounds that it's better than Sideshow's version from a long time ago, uh, which you'd expect, though, that's, so that's not surprising. Overall, uh, it is a nicely constructed figure. Um, it's a basic design, though, of course. There's uh, sculpting wise it's it's very basic when it just comes to what they had to sculpt they the paint that they applied though is quite nice I think that the color differences are a little jarring in some places shoulders may be a little too red uh, but overall I think that it's done very well um, again you don't have a, uh, a you know fantastic Hot Toys face sculpt, but understandable in this case, of course. These straps, I don't think that they sculpted or uh, fabricated that well. They do kind of flare out towards the sides, which I don't think is accurate. I wish that they were a little bit more uh, form-fitting and a little bit uh, just kind of uh, having them lay a lot better. Um, overall, though, quite a nice figure and has some really neat uh, kind of function, especially in that self-destruct feature. And taking that 13th spot, we have the Avengers Endgame Captain America. This was a figure that I've been long waiting for. As Captain America, I would say, is arguably my favorite MCU hero. Uh, so to get kind of the definitive final version of him uh, was very exciting. Um, as well as I uh, did not have a previous Captain America that had interchangeable faceplates. So I was pretty excited to see what that was going to all be about. Um, overall, this is a nice figure. Uh, the reason that I put him a little bit lower on this list is that although there's nothing that's horrible about him. There's some stuff that I, I would have enjoyed to have or, or thought would have been done a little bit better, particularly the face sculpts, um, <clears throat> the face plates themselves, the overall head sculpt's good. The face plates themselves, though, some of them look a little odd. Uh, they don't quite look like they line up and really match as the character. Um, the coloring on the shield I don't think is done fantastic. I would have liked something a lot deeper and stronger and shinier for the red particular. Um, and then of course have the dirty edges. Uh, but I wish that it would fade it into something like you could really see his shield faded into the destroyed portion rather than the, the you know end being destroyed but everything just kind of looking dirty on it. Um, that doesn't really gel as well as the side of the, uh, the cut pieces on the shield I don't think are done particularly well. Um, overall, the costume design is fantastic. I love the proportions. I think it looks great. Um, articulation is very limited. Not something I'm surprised about, but it is something that unfortunately is the case. Uh, so overall, a nice figure, but a little bit lower on the list in general. And taking that 12th spot, we have Ant-Man from Ant-Man 2, uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp. Uh, overall, this was actually a figure that I really enjoyed. Articulation-wise, quite good. A lot of these uh, Marvel figures use a very similar material when it comes to the costume, which either one is more of a Spider-Man Captain Mar Marvel uh, material that creates large creases, even though it doesn't hinder articulation, it damages the suit, or you've got something like Nebula, Captain America, that type of thing, where it doesn't um, uh, leave long-lasting creases however it's just really limited this is a nice mix where it is a cloth throughout but maintains that look of some of the more sophisticated material on like Nebula and Captain America uh, which is really nice so you get some really good poses you don't stress the suit the colors of the suit very bright uh, and uh, uh, really pop a lot more than my movie one Ant-Man which I didn't realize uh, you know looks dull compared to this um, overall a really solid figure the reason that he is kind of middle of the pack and and a, a little bit lower towards the middle is the head sculpt. So he comes with a Paul Rudd head sculpt, which is uh, comical, which is unfortunate. It really looks like whenever I first saw the sculpt, I thought it was that smiley, you know, filter that people are putting on a lot of things. So it's just crazy that that's the actual sculpt. I love the fact that they they went with the expression, like they tried to do expression. I love hot toys that have some expression, um, but they did it poorly. So therefore, it's it's a major disappointment and uh, bumps this figure down quite a bit. Otherwise, this one would be pretty high, I think. 
And taking that 11th place, we have Harley Quinn from the Batman Arkham Knight video game. Uh, overall, this is a long-awaited figure. I, you know, hope that they would do Harley Quinn a long time ago. It took them quite a while, but glad that they finally did it. Uh, the choice of which version of her to do, I like. It's not my favorite from the Arkham games, but it is my second favorite, so I'm pretty happy with it. Overall, I think execution is quite nice. There's a lot going on here, a lot of colors. Love all the accessories. My major complaint is the rubber in the arms. There are some figures where it is, uh, you know, like Venom. Venom, although I prefer just joints, I really get why they did the rubber, you know. He's all showing, he's got that slick look. Uh, it makes sense. Um, with this figure, it really doesn't for me. Uh, with the left arm, if it was articulated, it's completely covered anyway by her glove, uh, so it wouldn't um, uh, it wouldn't show the joint at all. And the right arm, because the glove's a little shorter, you would see a little bit of the joint, but it wouldn't even be the full joint. You'd see about 50% of it. So in my opinion, going with the uh, joints to make sure that the figure's long-lasting and to have full articulation would have been totally the way to go. So it's just very annoying that they didn't do it uh, when it was so easy and, uh, in my mind, just completely the right move. And taking the 10th spot, we have Captain Marvel from the Captain Marvel 1 film. Uh, this is the deluxe version. Overall, quite a nice figure. I think that the uh, head sculpt's pretty solid. The design of the costume is quite good. It is a material that does leave creases, unfortunately, uh, long-lasting creases. Uh, but she has a decent amount of range, um, especially in the arms there. And she comes with a lot of accessories, which I really enjoy, especially with the deluxe version, of course, uh, and an alternative head sculpt. So she's just kind of what I would consider a classic hot toy to be, just something that really feels complete. She's the opposite of the Mandalorian. The Mandalorian's on here because I think that there were some blatantly obvious things that we needed with him that we didn't get, while this one is more kind of your, uh, uh, your your hot toy figure from 10 years ago, where it just came with everything that you need. You can buy this figure and be set with Captain Marvel going forward. If you want a new costume, you can buy another one, but if you, if you are okay with this costume, this one will last you. This can be your perfect Captain America or Captain uh, Marvel going forward. If I say Captain America, any other portions in this little shot, I, I do apologize. Overall, though, just a really solid figure, I think. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the character, but the figure is very good. And in the ninth spot, we have Spider-Man from Far From Home, the upgraded suit, red and black. Overall, this is a great representation of the Tom Holland Spider-Man in uh, uh, kind of suit form. Um, and that's what I was really going for when I was trying to determine uh, a figure of Spider-Man to buy. I didn't know if I should hold out till No Way Home or if I should get this one, and I'm really happy I got this one. I'm not a huge fan of the other suits from No Way Home, and this suit is you know, like basically all of the other suits. Obviously, the uh, the black one is just inside out of this, and then the one with the gold um, uh, spider symbol is just this suit with the gold symbol on top of it. So this this figure, I think, is a great representation of uh, Tom Holland from Far From Home and uh, No Way Home because of those kind of just the other suits are just tweaked versions of this one. Plus, this suit appears in that movie for several scenes too. So this is a great one in my opinion. Yeah as a definitive kind of Tom Holland look. The design of the figure I think is fantastic. I think that it, it really has all the minute and very tiny detailing um, that this figure, you don't really even notice in the movie. Uh, when you look up close on this figure though, you can really see all the detailing. The only thing that I'm not a huge fan of with this figure is the hands. The red portion on the hands has the, the texture, but the texture is so extreme that his hands almost look like they're cushy. Uh, they look like they're, they're, they've kind of got some, um, some padding to them um, and have a really crazy wavy look. So that's my only disappointment. Otherwise, this is a fantastic figure with great accessories and a fantastic Tom Holland head sculpt. In eighth place, we have the Black Widow from Endgame. Uh, this is a figure that I wanted to get after I saw the Black Widow movie. I wanted a new representation of the character, as the only previous one I had uh, before was the one from Avengers, which was looking a little dated, and uh, never enjoyed the fact that it had kind of the real rooted hair. Um, so I kind of went on a search of what would be the best Black Widow to get, and I ended on the Endgame one, and I'm very happy with it. Overall, I think that the figure is great. I think the head sculpt is fantastic. The design of the 
costume is wonderful. It, it's, it has, you know, just kind of the standard black look, but there's a lot of layering, a lot of depth, and some red slashes here and there, which add uh, uh, some depth to the, the costume itself. Articulation is actually very good. However, it's the type of suit that if you articulate it too much, it'll leave kind of long-lasting creases, things of that nature. So not a huge fan of that, but um, overall, I think the design of this figure is really nice with a decent amount of accessories, too. And in seventh place, we have the Spider-Man um, Far From Home homemade suit. Uh, this head sculpt is not accurate on it. Uh, this is something that I've added from the uh, black suited Spider-Man, uh, or suit, not black suited, the, the red and black suit upgraded Spider-Man figure. Came with this Tom Holland head sculpt, so I used it on this uh, because I feel like this homemade one, although the, the head sculpt it comes with is cool and I love the interchangeable eyes, really uh, shines and sings when you get the uh, Tom Holland head sculpt on it. Overall, this is a fantastic figure. Obviously, simplistic. Um, however, it's simplistic to match the design design of the film, so you can't really fault it for that, uh, but its simplicity allows you to have a lot of fun with this one. It's got great articulation, although the whole thing's closed, it's done in a baggier, really flexible cloth, which means that you can have the most extreme poses that you want. The figure will not only be able to achieve them, but if you put him back to standing, he will bounce right back and look completely new, uh, which is great. No creases, nothing like that, where they're not supposed to be, of course. Um, overall, a really fun figure. The drone uh, 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 accessory that he comes with is massive and, you know, is so cool that they even made it its own figure a little later on and uh, just is a great piece with this one. This, again, simplistic figure, but incredibly fun. Taking the sixth spot, we have Gamora from Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Um, so this was a figure that I wanted as I had the original Gamora, but as soon as this one went on pre-order, I sold it because although that was a great figure, I'm not a fan of rubber. That one had rubber arms. This was the perfect opportunity um, in my mind to, to get a, a perfect Gamora because it, it had um, the jacket, which not only do I think looks really cool, but it allows it to have fully articulated arms and uh, get a get you know completely rid of the rubber design. Overall, this is a really nice figure. Articulation wise, it's quite good, not too hindered. Um, the articulation, it, the, the cloth that they're using too, doesn't really get damaged or hurt or, or leave long lasting marks uh, by doing some extreme articulation as well, which is nice. The face sculpt is, is very on par with the first one. I don't think that they upgraded it. However, if you remember when that first one came out, everyone was in love with it. It was really fantastic. So it's a sculpt that didn't really need an upgrade. And expression wise, the kind of stoic look. Typically I like expression, but when it comes to Gamora, that kind of fits too. So I can't fault them for not updating the face sculpt much at all. Uh, overall, just a fantastic figure. Comes with some decent accessories too, and uh, just a great one for the collection, and a perfect definitive Gamora in my opinion. And taking that fifth spot, we have Marty McFly from Back to the Future. Um, overall, this is a really nice figure. It's something that I did not get when it was first released. This is mainly a reissue. I think it has some updated paint on the face. Of course, a new Einstein accessory, but for the most part, it's almost 100% just kind of a reissue of a figure. Um, and I, I wish that it wasn't quite just a reissue. They could, you know, reuse a lot of the pieces, but I wish that there was some solid updates on him compared to the last one. That being said, the last one was incredibly good, so this is still a figure that really holds up and is fantastic. Love the array of accessories and uh, overall just very fun as it's it's you know the perfectly posable figure that has no limitations basically even though it's fully clothed it's a little bit more baggy it's all physical cloth so you get a lot of range and can get some really cool poses. In that fourth spot, we have Thor from Endgame, or Bro Thor, if you will. Uh, so this was a figure that I've been looking forward to for a long time, and it did not disappoint. I really like this one. I think that they nailed the proportions, which with this figure in particular is a little difficult. Sometimes it can look comical if not done right, or it can be kind of like Iron Studios where they just did it a little too thin. It doesn't quite look like that chunky Thor. This one, I think that they, they nailed the proportions overall, which is awesome. Uh, the head sculpt is fantastic. Arguably the best uh, Thor head sculpt that there is, I think. I think hair-wise, it is great. Um, I could have seen them, especially with this type of figure, doing kind of the rooted hair. I know they're kind of stepping away from that, but with how much hair he's got, 
that in the beard. You know, I could see them maybe reintroducing it for this. I'm glad they didn't, though. Uh, the hair sculpt itself is, is wonderful. The coloring is fantastic and really just can't complain at all. And what's amazing is that he has a good range of motion in the neck. You would not expect that here in the slightest, but he really does. The accessories are great. They really fix Stormbreaker, made it very accurate as opposed to the Mar or the Infinity War one, which was a little inaccurate. And the um, light up feature on the weapons is impeccable. I love it. And I love how they have you turn it on. You don't have to remove a panel, flip a switch, and then cap it back like they usually do. I hate that. You can turn these lights on without adjusting anything on the actual, uh, without you know taking anything off to find the button, which is great. And the fact of the matter is, they look like they're solid. They look like they're a solid piece. So it's almost like a two-way mirror where once the light's on, you can like see it from the inside, but without the light on, it looks like it's solid, like you can't see through it at all. It doesn't have a translucent look, especially in Millionaire. So it's very impressive and it has a cloudy lit up effect. I love all the lightning accessories that it comes with. Um, this is my favorite Thor figure. I, mean, yeah, I, I can definitely say that. This is my third uh, Thor and it's my favorite. I really enjoyed it. I think it's, it's a fantastic figure overall. Um, and, uh, you know, some people, either you love this version of Thor or you hate him. I am in the category that loves him, so although the figure's great, I also love the character. I thought that this... this uh, character had the perfect balance of being funny but not just being a joke he was he was exactly what he needed to be at the end there um, so I think they handled this character very nicely in the film and I think the figure represents him to a T. All right, and in the top three, taking the bronze place, we have the Avengers Infinity War War Machine. Uh, this War Machine is a character that has been really confusing to me with Hot Toys. I've had a few figures in the past. I've liked a lot of designs. I've I've gone back and forth about what kind of War Machine to get because I want a representation of War Machine in my collection, uh, but have had a lot of trouble choosing one. Uh, the most trouble I've had for any other character before. Um, however, I one day really took a look at the war, or the Infinity War one, even though he has very little screen time in that film. I, I really, you know, did some research on the figure itself, and it looked really cool. Getting it, not disappointed at all. It's a fantastic figure. It it completely has the War Machine bulk that I'm looking for, um, but with the array of weapons and accessories that make this figure like really pop and stand out and really aggressive. The techno camo, uh, camo kind of patterning on him is done really well. It's not so aggressive that he looks like a cheetah or something, but it's done subtly enough that it's a really cool design when you look at it, but if you just glance at him, he just looks like the black and silver too, which is very classic, so it's a really great mix. Um, overall, I finally found a definitive War Machine for my collection, and I'm uh, very happy with it. it. It's one that, like, I think it checks off the boxes that I was hoping for when it comes to this character, and I finally have them all here, so couldn't be happier with this design and figure for the character. All right, in second place and almost first uh, is Darth Maul from the Solo film. Uh, so this was a figure that I hemmed and hawed if I should get because I love the design, but I already had Darth Maul from, you know, uh, Phantom Menace. And this figure was, or this character was in the film for Solo for seconds. And uh, who knows if we'd ever see this design again. So I really hemmed and hawed whether I should get it. I got it and I don't dis d uh, regret it in the slightest. This is a fantastic figure. Just like the original one, it has full articulation with the costume not hindering a single bit you can do anything with this figure which is it makes him so much fun and so great having the stool makes it more of kind of a, a dynamic kind of piece almost like a statue to be honest and I love the uh, articulated wire within the skirt pieces at the bottom and then couple that with something that's majorly different than your last Darth Maul which is the mechanical legs which are done very nicely and again have great range of course uh, this is a, a hit out of the ball Park type of figure, really nicely done. Face sculpt is fantastic, and uh, overall, I love the design of this thing. I think it's a great figure. I have no complaints, and uh, I love displaying him like this. You know, kind of the shot in the film where he puts his hand up and his lightsaber just you know comes to his hand, and then he stands up, and you can hear the joints of the mechanisms from his legs helping him do that. Really cool. I, I do hope this is a version of the character that we'll see in the future. I would love to see this exact version of this character in the um, 
Obi-Wan show, that would be fantastic. Uh, but nonetheless, overall, love this figure, uh, a fantastic representation of the character, and, you know, I... I typically don't like to get a ton of versions of the same character, but when it comes to this, if you had the Phantom Menace one, get this one too, it's definitely worth it. And taking that first spot as my favorite hot toy of the year, I'm going to have to put the Spider-Man Far From Home Mysterio figure. Uh, this is an excellent figure and a character that I really enjoyed, both from the comics and then his representation in the film, so I was very much anticipating this figure, and it didn't disappoint at all. I really enjoy it. I love the dome sculpt. The dome is something that's a little bit left to interpretation of how it's done, uh, and I think that they nailed it in what they decided to do. It's a clear dome on on top of a sculpted um, uh, smoke effect with a pearlescent kind of shimmery blue and purple uh, texture on the top with blotted pieces that give it an incredible look with no lights on. You can turn lights on, but without the lights, it looks great. So you don't need the light at all. Just the way that it reflects the natural light around makes it look very impressive. It makes it look active and, and palpable. It looks like it's, it's moving in there, which is awesome. And then the suit itself, fantastic design. I think that they really nailed the intricacy of the suit, and the suit is very intricate, both from the armored pieces and the kind of rubberized suit underneath. There is not an inch of this guy that doesn't have a ton of detail. Very little just kind of soft surfaces, uh, which uh, makes for a more difficult figure to make, but one that they nailed when they did it. And then lastly, a cape that is f wonderful. They designed the cape really nicely where it hangs well, it keeps its lines, and it has not only a texture on the inside, you know, we see that all the time. We see capes with texture. But this one has a printed design with texture within that design. So, really intricate. And, you know, that's what I can say about this figure, is that it is intricate as hell. Uh, and they didn't cut corners. You know, this was a figure that when it was originally put on pre-order, it did not have a head sculpt uh, for Quentin Beck. But it's something that they added um, uh, shortly after. They announced and showed the head sculpt for him. Actually, they didn't show the head sculpt, but they announced it. And then right before the release, we finally got to see the head sculpt. And the head sculpt's great. It's a fantastic representation of Jake Gyllenhaal. Uh, and the smoke accessories that he comes with are awesome. Very happy that he comes with those. And that's something that they could have easily, and I would have expected them to leave out. So they, they went all out on this figure. It's a figure that is complicated, and they did it perfectly. And uh, it's a fantastic representation of this very unique character, um, and a character that I love making an easy number one for me and uh, my favorite hot toy figure of the year. And there's my ranking of the hot toys that I purchased in 2021 from my least favorite to my absolute favorite. And uh, this was a hard ranking, you know, typically I find that there is kind of a figure or two that I, you know, generally had a lot of issues with that are easy last places. Not the case this year though, I, I found myself having to nitpick, or uh, excuse me, um, nitpick to determine what the last and just the last few figures would be, because a lot of these are on par, you know, the, the worst figure is kind of just a a good figure, uh, which is great, you know, I, I have to say, so I'm, I'm very happy about that. Uh, overall, did purchase quite a few hot toys this year. There are 17 figures contained on this list. However, uh, again, I, I did purchase two other hot toys this year um, that were you know, older figures, New Goblin from uh, Spider-Man 3, as well as the Red Snapper from Iron Man 3. Uh, however, due to the f where they're displayed, they'd be very hard to get to, so I did not include them within this list. Uh, however, uh, it, you know, even without them, it, it, this list does not feel small. If you take a look at last year, I, I had much fewer hot toys, um, and that's probably due to the pandemic. But, uh, but overall, very happy with the array of figures released this year, and, uh, and really just some great figures overall. Very much anticipating next year, really anticipating them starting to do some of the figures that we all actually want from No Way Home, so can't wait for those to go up on pre-order. Uh, but I've got plenty on pre-order for next year, so this list should be just as juicy in uh, 2022. But let me know what you guys thought of the hot toys that I picked up, as well as how I ranked them, and I'd love to hear your guys' least and uh, uh, most favorite hot toys of the year um, from this year as well. So thanks so much for watching.